Hello everyone. Um, in this video I'm going to be taking this apart. This is the sound composer from my 2013 Fiesta ST. It's the thing that generates the noise that um, is fed back into the cabin. Generates it from uh, the intake pulses. It's connected to the pressurized intake uh, just before uh, the uh, compressed air goes into the throttle body. Um, if you've seen my recent video from a few weeks ago, you'll know that this failed on my car. It actually stopped making noise a few months ago. Um, I then went to a rolling road day and my car was down on power a bit. So it got me thinking that the failure of it making any noise could have uh, been a, as a result of a boost leak of some sort. So I took this off my car, replaced it with a mount tune Symposa Delete Kit, the bun, um, which is just effectively capping the pipe, and uh, doing some back-to-back -back runs before and after and data logging, I managed to gain some boost. Um, so this was leaking some boost. So what I'm going to do today is take this apart, um, let's see how it works and see if I can see uh, why it failed and if there's anything I can do to bring it back to life. So, dismantling the sound symposium. So what have we got first of all? Um, well this side here is what connects to the intake. So this is pressurized and if you look at it there you can see that there's effectively two chambers. This side is pressurized that's connected to the intake. This side actually generates the noise and then feeds it out of here into a pipe that goes back into the cabin into the passenger footwell. Um, that's for a right hand drive car, it would be the driver's footwell I think for left hand drive. Now as far as I can make out there is no transfer of any pressure at all from this chamber to this chamber or there shouldn't be. Um, the sound is generated by a diaphragm that exists in that side. It pulses according to the um, intake engine pulses and it causes a similar diaphragm on this side to also pulse and vibrate and that generates the sound. So let's get it apart then. It seems fairly simple. There's just six Torx screws. So uh, let's um, get them out. So with those out, it comes apart and this is what you're left with. So this side, the right hand side here, this is the pressurized side, that's the side that uh, is on the intake of the engine, and this side is what generates the noise. So here you can see this is the diaphragm. It's a solid one piece in the centre, but it's held in this rubber membrane that allows it to move back and forth. If I just put it back in, you can see there's a rigid bar there all the way around the edge. Fits in all the way around here. So with that side clamped on, and with this being the intake side, as the intake pulses uh, from the engine come in here, they cause this side to vibrate and move backwards and forwards. Now because this side clamped in there, again that bar clamps in there, that's what seals this side, the engine side, from the cabin noise side. The pulses move that it causes this side to move and that generates the sound that comes into the cabin. So it's got a hole there. What's that hole for? Well, if this was clamped together 
and there was no hole there, this is going to struggle to move back and forth because this chamber would be completely sealed and this wouldn't move without, you can hear the noise, you can hear the air through that hole, without that it wouldn't move freely. So there's, there is a hole by design on the intake side but all that does is allow this to move back and forth. On the other side this chamber looks as though it would be sealed because the chamber at the top is where the sound goes out and goes back to the cabin. So how does that side move without a hole in there? Well there's a tiny tiny hole, I don't know if you can see that, on the corner there. So if I move that side you can hear air just slightly escaping um, out of that hole there. So there is no transfer of pressure, or there shouldn't be any transfer of pressure from this side, the engine side, to this side which generates the sound. But I was losing boost. And what I think it is, is just that this part here and down here which sits in this gap and then it's clamped together just wasn't sealing properly. I can see that there's quite a build up of grime on the cabin side that somehow has got in there and I think somewhere along the way that build up of dirt has stopped it sealing. So I think if I give this a thorough clean, get it all nice and um, degreased and uh, spotless, I think I might be able to bring this back to life. So what I'm going to do now is just go and give this a thorough clean, get it dried off um, and then I will reassemble and then I think it's time for uh, some more back to back tests and I'll do a few runs today with the bung in place then I'm going to put this back in the car see A if I've got the noise back and B if I'm still holding the same levels of boost if I've got the noise I think the boost will be fine if I haven't got any noise then it's a dead symposer and um, I'm not quite sure why it's failed but like I said I think that with that in place and with that clamped on the top like that. I think the seal that exists in that gap there in the middle has failed and some of the boost because this side is pressurized is just seeping through and in seeping through it's not vibrating that side properly it's not vibrating that side as a result of that side vibrating and then it's not generating noise so two objectives get the noise back and hold boost so I'm going to give it a kill give it a clean and let's see how I get on. Right, so here we are. It's all cleaned up. Um, no special techniques, just resorted to some good old fashioned Washing up liquid in a bowl of hot water, gave it all a good scrub, um, was a bit gentle with the rubber around here because that's the uh, sealing surface, but I've also given a wipe around there um, on both sides and in the recess that it fits in um, with white spirit just to make sure there's no grease and make sure I give it the best possible chance of sealing. So reassembly, pretty straightforward. Um, you can see that there is um, a little tab there, there's a recess there, so it only goes in one way. So I'll lay that in there, make sure it's in, make sure it does what it needs to do, which it does. There's the recess there that goes on there, so it goes this way. Just tease it over and you can see that 
it moves it's uh, the the that center part is under pressure so with that clamped down in theory I should have a seal now so I'm gonna do it back up I will go and install it in the car and uh, let's see if I've got the noise back So that's it, reassembled, hopefully working again. So let's um, go and do a few runs in the car before I fit this. Data log, then I'm going to fit this and do some more, see if I've got the sound back and see if it's holding the same boost. To back runs look quite similar um, but here are the results red lines symposa delete kit fitted green lines refurbished symposa which has just been given a clean and it's back holding boost again so if you've got a fiesta st and it's uh, a good few miles old mine's done 57,000. it's probably worth taking your symposa off opening it up and giving it a clean because i was losing boost i'm not anymore um, if you found this video useful please do give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more content thanks for watching